Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're live from VMworld 2012, and I'm here with Stu Miniman, who's also with Wikibon. This is SiliconANGLE's coverage of VMworld 2012. We're here in Moscone, and uh, this is day two for us. And we would like to welcome you to the VMware Backup Spotlight. These spotlights are sponsored segments where we go deep into a topic, and this topic here is uh, data protection, backup and recovery. It's a really hot area. It's one that is uh, problematic for VMware customers and practitioners. And Stu, we're going to dig into this and, and talk about um, the trends in backup recovery. Uh, you and I are going to set it up. Uh, we've got uh, some experts, some domain experts coming on that we're going to talk to. We've got some customers coming on and we've got uh, an ESG analyst, Jason Buffington, will be on to wrap it up. So what we've done is what we do in these spotlight segments is we prepare some of the overview trends, some of the things that we're seeing in the Wikibon community. And uh, Mark Hopkins has the, uh, the content and we'll put it up on the screen as we go along and we'll talk to it. We'd like to start with the market angle. Now, Stu, you and I have been following these markets for a number of years. We've seen backup really evolve, haven't we? Um, yeah, absolutely, Dave. So if we look at kind of the virtualization market, there are so many pain points that users had. Uh, there were things that worked really well in a physical environment that when we went virtual, didn't work quite as well. Backup was one of those. Uh, and the same, VMware uh, is trying to make sure they can kind of keep up with the competition, adding features into virtualization, especially uh, you know, what comes base with the hypervisor because the hypervisor is being commoditized. And there were some announcements this week that we'll talk about that uh, really are designed to address that problem, but as we've talked about many times, <laughs> virtualization breaks storage and it really puts a lot of pressure on backup windows. Now, the other big thing we see here is tape is not dead, everybody loves to say tape is dead. Tape is not dead, it's the last resort, it's the deep archive. Um, but it is absolutely not the main backup media anymore. And we talked to a number of customers, many, many still have tape, but very few are, are, are using tape as the primary backup mechanism. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. We look at things like, you know, virtual tape libraries chipped away at tape, you know, flash and disk are just pushing tape, you know, further downstream. The revenue stream of uh, tape has gone down, but like everything else we know in IT, everything is additive and customers have multiple environments. And, and you know, tape's going to stay around for a while. So we saw some statistics this week, Pat Gelsinger and Paul Moritz and virtually you know, every other speaker has talked about the propensity or the, 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 the magnitude of virtualization. About 60% of applications running on x86 servers are virtualized now. Um, so what that leads to is virtual machine sprawl. You've got massive data growth. Everybody's now talking about big data. What does that do? That stresses the backup window. So what we've seen is the evolution of, of backup. Now Stu, you may remember uh, VCB, VMware Consolidated Backup, it was VMware's initial attempt to really you know, provide a backup mechanism and it really you know, was uh, uh, not well received by customers, very cumbersome. So the, the VMware really, around the 2009, 2010 time frame, really got serious about uh, uh, storage APIs. Not only with primary storage like with the VAAI, but also VADP the VMware API for data protection. And as part of that, um, uh, they included something called change block tracking. Now that's a common denominator in the industry. You see it in Oracle environments. The change block tracking really was, is critical because of course you're moving so much data around the network in a, in a virtualized world, you only want to move or back up those changes that have been made. You don't want to back up the entire volume every night. Now that's very important in a virtualized environment where you've got this I.O. blender. Yeah, no, absolutely, Dave. Um, you know, it, it, right here about kind of on-site and off-site, you know, cloud fits into this. Uh, there's been so many different solutions that are trying to kind of replace tape and find other ways to do backup. And if I'm, if I'm getting to, you know, we said over 90% virtualized, we've got to solve it for that base hypervisor environment so that I have that flexibility. Uh, that, that includes backup, which is critical for any customer environment. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that these are some of the impediments. I mean, we've, we've heard this week that the industry, VMware in particular, has done a good job of, of, of encapsulating and, and abstracting and pooling and automating servers and memory. Um, you know, storage is getting better, networking, you know, your field is really becoming the new bottleneck as Flash takes over, but these impediments like storage, like backup in particular, will slow the pace of virtualization adoption unless they're addressed. And so that's what uh, VMware's trying to do. 
The other piece is of, 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 of VMware Data Recovery, VDR, is a software appliance that's shipped with vSphere 5. <coughs> it's a free utility. Um, that's been replaced by VDP, uh, VMware Data Protection. Now VDP is powered by Avamar. Now Avamar uses a source side deduplication capability which has always played well in virtualized environments. Why? Because you're deduping at the source before you're pushing data over the network. So that's been critical. That's a new announcement that was made just this week, right? Yeah, yeah and it was something that you know, we talked about at the keynote this morning. Uh, there, there actually was a demo done up on stage and you know, really simple and you know, really designed for the virtualization admin to be able to do that. You know, couple of clicks, a lot of automation, uh, you know, simple, 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 and uh, oh yeah, it's free and included. So as I said before, um, you know, all those things that we want to make sure that kind of the essentials plus bonus uh, is uh, bundle is better for customers, especially as VMware wants to get deeper into the SMB market, which was a big push not only for what they're doing here at VMworld, but what we're hearing from VMworld as VMware for their push out into the marketplace to expand because they do real well in the enterprise and many of the mid-tier markets, but those places uh, that you know might be more prone to go Microsoft because it's free or some of the free hypervisors, you know, Microsoft wants to push down into that broader parts of the market to keep their growth accelerating. Now, we're also seeing new forms of backup emerge really uh, around this notion of, of snapshots, space efficient snapshots that can enable data protection. So we have a visual here. Mark, if you wouldn't mind putting up the next slide. Uh, this is essentially what we've called on theCUBE the time machine for the enterprise. We first introduced this concept at VMworld 2010, and now we're starting to see the technology community step up and actually provide these types of capabilities. And essentially the idea, Stu, is you take a, 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 an efficient snap of the data, and you might even use continuous uh, data protection, so a CDP, and you can dial up or dial down your, your RPO, i.e. Uh, your recovery point objective, how much data you're willing to lose. Well, I want it only to be a minute, or I want it to be 15 minutes. Um, obviously, losing only a minute or a second is more expensive than losing you know, an hour. So you can dial it up or dial it down, um, and basically you take that snap and then you go you know, shoot it you know, through the LAN, uh, either on site, you know, let's say you do it first on site, and then you get it off site. You might even put it into an optional tape archive and then jam it through the WAN uh, for long-term backup or, or archiving or even the DR target. Yeah. So now we've involved the network and snapshots to really take advantage of protecting data and combining in, blending in disaster recovery. Yeah, Dave, it, uh, if you look at the analogy, the time machine for the enterprise, so we think about Apple and, and what they did with time machine on, on kind of the Apple. It's nice and simple and easy. Since 2010, uh, you know, Apple's launched iCloud and iCloud isn't working all that well. So you know, maybe VMware can actually get this to the enterprise uh, before you know, Apple gets it working right for the consumer. So yeah, right, that's right. I mean, you know, oftentimes we've seen consumer lead, you know, just good enough consumer lead the trends, that's the consumerization of IT. Um, and, and I think you're right, I think there's real opportunities for the enterprise to give a little bit more reliable grade. Now we're going to end on the, some customer imperatives. We've got eight. Um, so the key, and we've talked about this a lot on theCUBE, is to reduce your resource contention in virtual environments. Stu, we understand the importance of that. It's, it's, it's critical. Uh, in order to uh, 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 maintain and reduce your backup windows or even eliminate your backup windows. As I say often, my friend, my friend Fred Moore coined this term, backup is one thing, recovery is everything. So think about things like recovery times and recovery granularity and the data quality and really push your vendors hard on, on those issues. Now Stu, the other piece is VMware integration. We've done a lot of work and you've spearheaded much of this with David Floyer on the, the levels of VMware integration uh, from backup vendors. We talked about VAI, but specifically here we're talking about VADP, uh, vCenter integration. Uh, we mentioned VDP replaces VDR as the small business solution. It's a free solution. Um, but so integration is very, very important for customers. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, you, you talked about the technology that powers this was Avamar's technology, and you, you know, I remember back when Avamar first kind of came out with that virtualization integration, it wasn't take something old and kind of patch it, it's you know, really designed for that virtual environment, so it's, it's kind of a nice natural fit uh, for virtual environments and you know, Lots and lots of you know virtualization customers knew that on the enterprise side, and now they've got kind of a you know a, a free and you know even easier version uh, to, to use that comes with vSphere 5.1.
The other thing, Stu, we hear a lot about homogeneity, but I think that the reality is you've got to plan on living in a multi-hypervisor world. Uh, you know, it's not likely you're going to have one system from, from one vendor. So, um, you know, while at the same time, you're going to have oftentimes many backup solutions, might have two, we might even have three, that's the norm, but multiple manage management consoles don't have to be. You know, no. from your networking background, you know about the single pane of glass and, and what that means for customers, but I think we're, we really want to push customers to take a similar approach for, for yeah, backup. Yeah, Dave, actually, just to give a data point on the multi-hypervisor environment, recent study that, w that Wikibon published last week, uh, to according to our respondents, I think it was 56% of uh, customers today are using more than one hypervisor. Uh, many of them have three or four hypervisors today, actually, for different environments. Uh, some, some worry about silos popping up, even in your hypervisors, but uh, you know, great point on the management piece. Uh, that you, know, you need to simplify operations uh, or you can't keep up. Now, as we talked about, snapshots are rapidly emerging as a new form of data protection. And specifically, uh, we talked about this notion of a time machine for the enterprise, but but really, as a means of protecting data, it's becoming the new vision, and, I, and we expect to see a number of companies really hopping on that. We're seeing it today in the marketplace, and we expect that that is going to ultimately be the norm where backup is provided as a service. Um, and then the other piece is, you know, as part of that, don't make disaster recovery an afterthought. All too often, particularly in small and mid-sized businesses, companies don't have a comprehensive disaster recovery strategy, integrate that into your data protection strategies, and then finally, backup is not one size fits all. Really think about the value, the data of the, the value of the data and the value of the applications that you're protecting and tailor your backup you know, for that. So Stu, that's really a, a, a high level overview of what we're seeing in the backup market and some of the trends. I really appreciate you coming on and, uh, and sharing your thoughts with our audience. And um, so that wraps up the, the front segment. Stay tuned, we've got uh, deep dives with uh, domain experts. We've got uh, uh, customer perspectives and we've got the independent analyst perspective. Keep it right there. SiliconANGLE.TV's uh, coverage of VMworld and this is the VMware Backup Spotlight. Keep it right there. <laughs>